All right. Today we're going to cover the Avaya IP Office mobility application. Um, the mobility application is uh, it's a piece of software that you install on your smartphone, your iPhone or your Android, and uh, allows you to connect back into the office. Um, here's a picture of the Android application. I kind of have a snippet there. Today, I personally use an iPhone, so everything that you see will be on the iPhone um, app, but there's not a whole lot of difference between the two, so uh, you should still, even if yeah, you guys are just Android users, you should get some valuable information out of this. And we'll dive right in. Uh, my name is Paul Fragway. I'm a systems engineer for Agility. I started out doing uh, support and I've also gone on sales demos out in the field. Um, after some time, about a year ago, I've started moving into installations. Um, I've been with Agility just over two years. So I um, um, hope that I uh, continue to provide value, value for these guys and uh, the customers as well. IP Office Power User is a license that you purchase. It gets installed onto your IP Office, and that one license grants you access to many different applications. A cell phone flare, 1X portal, mobility, call assistant, Outlook add-in. These um, today we're talking about the mobility app, but all of these, uh, the back end for all of these applications are, is the 1x portal so with that one application or that one license uh, you you do get quite a bit and it's a one-time license you purchase it you'll have it forever it's not a monthly fee it doesn't expire I think the cost is around 150 maybe a little more but it's uh it's very uh, it's a it's a valuable license for what you get for from it um, as far as your IP office requirements um, of course, the uh, power user license, and then uh, with that, you'll have to deploy 1x portal, okay, for the mobility app to connect to. You also need an essential license. Every system that we've installed has an essential license. That is, we don't. There is a, a IP office lower than that, but we don't. We don't sell that. We only sell the lowest is uh, for us is essential. And then also um, on top of that, you'll need a preferred edition license. What the preferred usually grants you right off the bat is Voicemail Pro. So if you have Voicemail Pro in your environment, you can deduct that you have also the preferred edition license. If you have embedded voicemail, most likely you have essential edition license. So I hope that's that's clear for anyone. If at any point, guys, if uh, you have any questions, just a couple of you already have just the, in your go to meeting um, uh, pane there. Just you can hit me a message, and then I'll scan that every once in a while and try to answer anything uh, that pops up. All right. So what we're gonna do here is um, uh, I'm going to also give you a high level technical overview of how the mobility app works. Also going to show you how to reallocate licenses. Let's say you have some users leave the company. You need now to take that license away from that person and maybe you have someone new coming on and, and uh, assign it to someone else. Also going to show you how to set up the mobility application on the smartphone. Um, and also install it and then we'll kind of um, go through the app itself show you some of the features how to make and receive calls and then at the very end we'll kind of take a technical dive real quick into some troubleshooting that you can do to resolve issues if you have any with it here's high level view here we have an IP office that's on the local network and we also have a 1x portal server that's uh, also connected to the network and then we have our firewall to the internet. Here is our mobile user who has the mobility app installed and they um, have their app configured with a fully qualified domain name. Okay, in this case it's mobile.avaya.com. Alright, and it's going to connect to the 1x portal server via port 8444. So that port will need to be forwarded on your firewall to the 1x portal server itself to allow connectivity. And also in um, 
the IP office. We've configured a user. Here it's Matt F and his password's 1234. And Matt has an assigned power user license and it's going to allow him to connect. So the mobile.avaya.com needs to have through your internet DNS service provider, which may be GoDaddy or it may be someone else, you'll need to have the um, FQDN, let me go back, FQDN resolved to your firewall IP address, in this case 64.64.64.64, okay? So this will tell the app to connect to your firewall, which then forwards those packets over to the 1X portal. All right. On the inside, let's say you have internal DNS, which you should, you'll need to resolve mobile.avaya.com to your internal IP address of the 1X portal server, right, which is, uh, in this case, it'd be 192.168.24.2. What that's called is split DNS. So this allows, a split DNS in this scenario will allow this device to connect from the internet whether it's that individual's house wireless or say their home wireless network and then if they come into the office they can get on the office Wi-Fi and they can still connect without having to change every time either the IP address here inside of the mobile client. That's kind of a high level overview of what's taking place here. Let's see we have a question. Oh no, okay. All right, so we talked about licensing. You'll need a power user license. So let's say, in this case, here we have an organization, and this is our system here at Agility, and we have 15 power user licenses, okay? So inside of system status, we've logged in. Uh, let's say I've tried to uh, uh, roll out a new license to a new employee, and I get error messages. It's not working, and it tells, so I'm wondering, do I have any licenses available? So I go to system status. All right, I go to resources, licenses, and I look here in power user and I can see I don't have any available. I have 15 on the system and I have allocated 15 to uh, 15 different users. So if I want to bring someone on board as a power user, I'm going to have to either purchase a new one from your favorite Avaya partner or you're going to need to remove one from one user and reassign. And here I kind of have a screenshot of, of manager, but what I think I'll do is I'll walk you guys through it. I think you'll get more from it than if I just show you screenshots. So let me get out of this a second. And I have a demo config pulled up here. All right. This is a demo config that I have um, for uh, scenarios like this. But let's say we're trying to assign... Melinda Oak, a power user license, and were unable to. If they were all allocated, you would not see power user on the list here at all, okay? You would just see basic user, pretty much. So if I need to find out who has all of the power user licenses, I come to licenses, and then I'm going to go to power user. Here you can see all the uh, licenses I have. These come in bundles by the way. So here's a bundle of five, here's a bundle of five. You can also get singles if you need them for onesie twosie deployments. But um, okay, question is who has the license and who do I need to take it from to reallocate it? Power user license is just about the only license that I'm aware of that you can come in here and double click on the license and see actually who has assigned that license. So in this case, I have four of them, and let's say um, A. Atwood is no longer with the company. I can remove that from that individual, click OK, all right, and um, save that. That would throw another license into the pool for me to roll out to a new employee. Here we go to uh, my users now. So let's say we were looking, uh, we were working with Melinda, and we want to enable Melinda for for uh, mobility. So I come to her user that I already have set up and I grant her power user. I also need to give her a password up here because uh, if you remember from an earlier guru earlier on in the year we talked about uh, this password field here how it's not the password for um, voicemail which 
is a common mistake a lot of people make. It's actually the password used for all of the different applications that control and connect to the IP office. So in this case, we'll give her 1234. 1234. Okay. And here you can see all of the applications that she has available to her. But we don't want her to have anything but mobility. So in this case, we'll take away smart uh, soft phone. She has to keep this 1x portal service because remember I told you that's part of the back end. And this uh, telecommuter, um, she'll keep that too. We'll take out Flare Remote Worker and we'll keep that. Okay, so we'll enable the mobile VoIP client. What this checkbox is here is it, when you check that, it will send Melinda an email to this email ad address and it will send her a link that she can open up on her smartphone and it will take her to the app store and automatically and when she clicks the link it will download the proper um, uh, app for her device and for the IP office and it will also put in there her username and the server um, FQDN that we talked about in that earlier slide so she it, it minimizes the amount of time she has to spend configuring it however if your voicemail to email is not working um, then that email is not going to go out and as an administrator you're going to have to double back to that person and set it up okay alright so we have we have the proper boxes checked here there's one more place we need to go and that's the mobility tab okay this controls uh, this is more granular control of mobility we need to enable mobility features okay and we need to enable twinning Twin when logged out, mobile call control, and this will set this individual up for multiple things, okay? Twinning. It's important to realize that the mobility app that you install on the iPhone or the Android, it doesn't receive calls. It only makes calls and gives you um, uh, insight into uh, people's a status in on the phone system so you can tell if they're logged in you can chat with them but as far as actually receiving a call that is the mobility uh, I'm sorry the mobile twinning feature here alright so if in this case if Melinda is a remote worker and she needs to make and receive phone calls she needs to put in or as an administrator you can do it on the back end her cell phone number so we'll put in a number Okay. Also, let's say Melinda works 100% out of, out of the office. You don't you did not deploy her as an administrator. You didn't deploy her a conventional desk phone. She may not even have a desk at your office. So what you would want to do in this scenario is you want to check the box twin when logged out. What that is saying is when her extension's not logged in, you still want those calls to twin to her twin device or phone number whatever that is it may be her home number it may be her cell number which it is in this case alright so that's that's important to have there this checkbox enables the ability to um, actually log into the mobile client and this checkbox here allows for transfers and that for calls that you receive via twinning okay and we'll click OK so now this individual is ready to go. Everything's set up. We've granted access. We've enabled mobile twinning. Um, also right here you can set a time of day. Let's say she's a remote worker and you want her to only receive twin calls from the hours of 9 in the morning till let's say 5 in the afternoon. So you can come over here to your time profile. You can create a new profile all right, and specify the, the days and the hours that you want and you can name it let's say you can, can name it Melinda's hours and then you come over here to user Melinda go back to mobility and you would assign that time profile there okay and then so she would only receive those calls during that window of time that you have configured alright then obviously you would say yeah you want to make sure you save your changes alright so Melinda set up and that's all there is to it. I don't see any questions out there. We kind of went over a lot. So if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. And I'm going to move on to demoing the mobility app itself.
Let me get that pulled up. All right. Can everybody see that? Somebody let me know so I don't get too far into this and you guys not be able to see it. But here, we, here is the mobility application. All right. Good deal. Thanks. Here's the mobility application already logged in, but let me close it out and we'll take it from the beginning. So when you first have it installed, you'll see it here, all right, but you won't have, obviously you won't have the uh, push notification, but you'll see the Avaya 1X mobile, okay? And I'm going to open it up. Mine's already configured to connect, but if you, the first time you open it up, you'll see a red dot here. Red means not connected or disconnected, okay? So to configure it to connect, you'll come up here to the arrow flying out of a box. Not sure what that icon is supposed to indicate, but that is your settings, okay? So here I have entered in the FQDN that we configured in the beginning. And I have the individual's username. This username, by the way, corresponds to the name here, okay? And it is case sensitive, all right? So, username and then the password, okay? And with that, hit done, that individual should connect in a perfect world, right? There's a lot, there's a lot of steps that need to go on when deploying 1X Portal, and we kind of talked about that on the overview at the, that one slide in the beginning. Um, ports need to be open on the firewall. All these things need to happen. And we work through you guys step by step to deploy this application. And uh, we have tools that help us uh, track down and pinpoint exactly where the problem is. But with everything configured correctly, you get a green light here. Okay? You also get a green light here that, that indicates that you're connected. And this is the mobility application. They've made some changes to it. One is uh, with release 9. One is you can now upload a, um, uh, what is that called? An avatar. You can pick it from your, you can take a new picture, pick it from pics that are on, yeah, logo, uh, um, from your phone. Also pull it from Facebook. So uh, that's kind of neat. I've got the uh, Papa Patron or Pizza Patron guy on mine. Uh, there may be some copyright laws there that I'm infringing on, but oh well. Um, let's see. We also have different areas that you'll see right off the bat. This top section kind of keeps track of your chat sessions that you have with different individuals. This is voicemail, okay? And this is your conference bridge. So if you have a conference bridge and somebody pops onto it, my conference bridge is um, set up and I'll go ahead on another extension, log into it. And you can see when somebody logged into it, it, it makes a change on my mobility app and lets me know that somebody's on my bridge. To me, this is pretty powerful because I'm out in the field a lot. I'm constantly away from my desk. But I am also have responsibilities to be on different calls during the day. And a lot of times, customers don't join the call right on time or they don't join it at all. So I don't have to waste my time waiting on a conference bridge when that individual's late or not going to show. I'll get a little buzz in my pocket, I'll look down, um, and I'll see somebody's in my bridge. When they're on there, I can tap on the join button here. And what it's going to do is the mobility app will join me to that bridge. And you can see I'm getting a phone call. That phone call is coming from the IP office at Agility. I'm going to mute that there and mute that. Okay. And now I'm on that bridge with that individual. Go ahead and end it. Pull this back up. Okay. Also, so I disconnected from the bridge, but I can still see that this party's still on there. If I wanted to mute that person, I could select them and mute. Um, what I did, sometimes I go too fast and you can't, can't see what I'm clicking, but I clicked up here, I clicked edit, okay, edit, and then I select the radio button here, 
and then mute. Okay, now that individual's muted, I can see that I have the microphone symbol with the uh, line going through it. That indicates that they're muted. You also see that this person's offline. What that's saying is, is that they are not logged into any power user applications. So if this was a call from the outside, one of our customers that dialed into my bridge, then I would see that um, it may show them offline because they're not a power user in our organization. But it, let's say it's uh, Wendy, our, our project manager, and she's in there. I would see that she's off online. And then if I wanted to send some messages to her, you know, that that's uh, not going to be broadcast out over the conference bridge, I can do that. Okay. We can say, um, See, so you can see how that can be powerful. I, um, I could ask Wendy, hey, what's this customer's name? So when they do jump on the bridge, or maybe they're already on there, but I guess technically you should know, um, you're not asking a question that you should already know, or maybe it's, it's a little more professional um, in that case. But um, that's a quick rundown on that feature. I want to click back up here. Okay. If I wanted to go ahead and disconnect this person from the bridge, maybe the conversation has taken a turn and it's not something I want this individual to hear, I can go ahead and select that and disconnect. Okay? And now they're off. So having visibility also in your conference bridge allows you to, to keep a visual idea of who's in the bridge. So you always know how you want to steer the conversation if that's necessary. back here and we'll just uh, scroll through the different features in here at any point if you think there's something that I'm missing um, bring it to my attention but I'll try to hit everything uh, the next tab along the bottoms contacts okay I'm gonna go back I'm gonna hit this back button up here okay I have different different groups here I have all contacts what that's going to be is um, a mix of it's going to be a mix of my iPhone contacts if I've imported them and the contacts on the IP office. Okay, available contacts, and we'll go into that. This is going to be everybody in our organization that's currently logged in to Power User Application, and you can see we have a sales rep, Aaron, um, Jeff, who's an engineer. Cassie is a new sales rep for us. There's Marnie. You see some of us have pictures loaded. Uh, the ones that have pictures are the more technical savvy. No, I'm just joking. But there's Matt. So Matt knows that I'm going to be on here. And I can, I can see Matt's available. And he's also available to participate. He hasn't changed his status. So he's he's kind of saying, hey, if you want to communicate to me, I'm available. These other individuals, they may be on. Um, like Cassie here's on the phone. Jeff's working on a project. He doesn't want to be disturbed at all. But I can hit Matt up here. And I can send him. I could call him if I want. I Up here at the top right, if I click on this arrow flying out of a box, I can hit select call. Okay, And that would place a call to Matthew. Or let's say I'm on that conference bridge that I was on earlier and now I need Matthew to be on the bridge with us so I could add Matt to the conference. And we'll see here, I'll go back home and you see Matt's in the conference. I'm going to join too on this other extension that I have sitting at my desk. Hey Matt, are you there? Hey buddy, so we can see that um, now I have a coworker. I've also have a customer on my conference bridge, and uh, we're all able to communicate and uh, discuss whatever it is. Hey Matt, thank you, appreciate it, bud. No all right, bye. And um, there he goes. So that's uh, that's how you call. That's how you can add an individual to a conference. I can also hear a send him a message. and he could respond. Let's go back to the directory here. 
All right, so that's all that that's available contacts. You also see your iPhone contacts, and I can p choose anybody from here that I needed to call. Um, if I wanted to call Arlington Water, why I would want to do that, I don't know. But I could uh, select them here. Now, on our system, we have to dial a seven to call uh, to get an outside line. So if I just press the phone button here, it's going to dial that number without the feature access code. So what I'm going to do, and I don't have any dialing rules set up. You can set those up if you want. Um, but in this case, I don't have them set up. But I'll hit this I. I'll press that. And it tells me the number. And if I select the number, here it brings me to the number pad. And I can select, I can come here and I can enter in uh, the 7. In our case, we use 7 to dial out. And then I just press the handset button down at the bottom, and that call will go out. Um, I'll, I'll get to you in just a second, Ralph. Yes, I can answer that. Um, so it, once I press the button down here to make a phone call, this is one thing that's kind of confusing at first for people to get a grip on, but once they understand it, it's, it's not a big deal. Once the call goes out, it sends a signal out to the IP office. The IP office says, oh, okay, Paul's trying to make a phone call. I'm going to call him back on the cell phone that he's told me that he's at. So I will receive a call from my IP office internally, and I have to answer that call. When I answer that call, then it dials out to the individual that I'm trying to uh, call. Okay, so we'll do one here. I don't necessarily want to call this number, but let's, um, let's go through this. Um, we'll go back. I want to go to available contacts, and I'm going to call Matthew. Okay, so I'll select Matt. In this case, I'll select his little phone icon. Now, I'm going to receive a call on my cell phone, and it's going to be the IP office calling me. Okay, now I'm receiving the call. I answer it. Now on the cell phone, I hear ringing, and it's actually dialing. Matt's phone number. If he answers. He thought he was done with the demo. But we'll so but now I got his voicemail. I'll end that. But that's how it works. So the call comes in, and then you answer it, and then the call connects you to the party that you're trying to talk to. Okay. I have a question here. Someone's asking about uh, the messaging feature. and We'll go back to that. Here's one from Marnie. Um, Marnie's saying that I can call her. I'll give her a ring here in a minute. But yes, this is much like chat. It's It's kind of a hybrid in between um, a text message and a chat so it can it can uh, it's pretty instant so now if I wanted to call Marnie we'll do this again real quick call I'll receive the call from the IP office. And I answer that. And it's ringing morning. Hey, Marty. Just making a test call to you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. So that's kind of a quick rundown of how it works. Uh, Ralph, I hope I answered your question on that as far as the messaging. Let me know if I didn't. We'll go back to um, our contacts here. <laughs> One of you guys is working with our support group while you're on the guru call. All right. <laughs> Does the call count on your minutes? Great question. Um, yes. When you have it set up, 
for this callback, which there's also in release 9, there's a VoIP mode. If you decide to use VoIP mode, which I'll demo that at the very end, Ron, and um, if you do VoIP mode, then it doesn't count against your minutes because it's going over the internet. But I will uh, make sure to demo that at the very end here. I'm going to see. So we also have a broadcast group. A broadcast group is going to contact everybody or message everybody. You can disable that um, if you want to, which you probably would. Um, this is your corporate directory. Okay, This is everybody that we have on our internal agility IP office. And then personal. You can have personal contacts in there. Um, um, people that are outside of, of uh, your organization. Okay, Messages. If I go down, I'm on this messages tab down here. If I go down here, I can see a record of uh, the people that I've had messaging conversations with throughout the day. Events. I'm right here. This is this is useful. This shows me a call history and also my voicemail. Okay, so you can see down here in my inbox, I have three voicemail messages. And then any one of these, I don't have to dial in. Remember, this is on my cell phone. If I'm out in the field on an install, I received a call. I didn't answer it, but because I had my mobility app, I knew who it was from, and I know it's an urgent issue that I probably need to get to. But it could just be something, them giving me an FYI that really doesn't require uh, me to talk to them right then. So I can select the message, and I can listen to it. Okay, That's playing um, on my cell phone in my ear, or if I hit the button up here, it'll play on speakerphone. Okay. Let's say it's from a previous customer that I was working with yesterday, and I really don't have moved on, and I don't have time to deal with it, but I need to get that to support for somebody to handle, and I use this frequently. I can come here, and I can send that to my support staff, okay, and they can reach out to that person and contact them. They'll get it. What they'll get is a email with an attached WAV file. You can kind of see the WAV file sticking out right there. Okay, let's go back. So these are all of my voicemails. These down here that you see, if you're not aware, if you do a recording, your recorded um, conversation drops into your voicemail. So this is really useful if um, you're on a conference call and you're in a situation where you can't actually take notes. You can review those, you can record it and review the conference later um, when, when you need to. That's voicemail. Let's go back though. We're still in events down here. And this kind of, I'll show you the call history. We'll go into all calls. You can see the different calls I've made, okay, uh, this morning and throughout the uh, previous days. It kind of tells you, here's a missed call that I received from Alex. Just kind of goes on and on. Um, I have a question here. If users have the ability to text and l to text and link, why use IM from mobility? It's just another avenue of communication. Um, if you're already in the mobility app, it, it's right there. Instead of having to flip between your text and come back to mobility, it's just it's you know. Being able to communicate is probably one of the most valuable resources we have in our organization and the more ways that you have to communicate the, and the more efficient it is and less cumbersome the more likely you're going to do it so if you have it right here um, then you not have to flip between your iPhone text and your mobility app then um, it makes it easier then you're more likely to use it and I think that's the overall point and we can go down into missed calls you can see so this is all this is call history again this is very similar to what the 1x portal looks like for call history and the Outlook add-in and that. It just brings it to your cell phone. And here's the conference bridge that we demoed already. Alright, this area right here, I can put in a status. So today everybody can go to my, they can pull up their 
directory in their um, 1x portal or whatever power user application they have and they'll see that Paul's doing a guru uh, mobility training today but let's say you know I'm, I'm remote let's say uh, you know my boss doesn't see me every day or doesn't even talk to me every day but obviously she needs to know where I'm at so I can put my status in there she pulls up her power user application and she sees Paul's on an install in Plano she knows immediately where I'm at and what I'm doing um, let's say I need to be on do not disturb I can set that in here and my phone is on do not disturb now it's not just telling people do not disturb I am set to do not disturb meaning if someone were to call me the phone would not ring it would go directly to, vo to my voicemail Let me turn that off and we've deployed this to um, a doctor's office and down in Houston who have they have multiple offices and they have nurses that bounce from facility to facility in one way they have decided this would be useful in their organization is that the nurse would always say which office they're in so they may say uh, Houston North or Houston South and then all of their coworkers know where that individual's at and it, again you can communicate without it effortlessly they know you're there maybe they need a package carried from there to uh, from south to north and because they see you're there they say hey while you're there can you grab it, it it's just it makes it makes life easier so that's the status. Um, I've showed you most of the items along the bottom. Now, um, Ron had a question about does it count against your minutes? Let's get into that. You'll see this icon here. This is supposed to represent a cell phone on a docking station. And this lets me know at a glance that I am receiving calls on my cell phone. This is an important screen and it's kind of a lot to digest at first. So what this thing is when I'm making a call, okay, if I have this uh, dotted here, this radio button, I'm going to use VoIP mode. VoIP mode means that you're going to use the local Wi-Fi. Maybe you're at Starbucks, maybe you're at your home Wi-Fi, that you're going to use that network to make a phone call when you use VoIP mode you are not using your cell phone minutes you're not going over AT&T or whoever your carrier is you're going over the Starbucks Wi-Fi which by the way you are subject to the quality of that that wireless connection it's in uh, it can be a brutal world out there so so keep that in mind however this is very valuable especially when you are traveling abroad overseas so if you have executives that are going to Europe or Mexico or wherever this is this is very useful uh, and can save them quite a bit of money for the most part if you're in the states I recommend putting it uh, to not use VoIP because you really don't have control over the quality um, so in uh, here in the states I use uh, the the callback feature which does use my minutes but you know minutes are almost I mean you get so many minutes now I, and I every month I have minutes that roll over so I'm not really concerned about that but I use uh, call me back on my mobile so what that saying is when I place a call okay when I call Matthew I want the IP office to call me back on my mobile and this little crayon here is an edit icon and I can specify the number that I'm at so this is where I say I put in my cell phone number okay and here uh, that's my cell phone number I put it in and the IP office calls me back on that and then I would hit save up here in the top right when you set that or save it or change it by the way it takes maybe 10 15 minutes for for um, 1x portal to receive that information and uh, be synced with the IP office so if right now immediately if, if you try to make a phone call it may fail but just wait a say a minute and it will it will all sync up okay now you can also have it call me back on home work custom um, I had my mom was in the hospital not too long ago and I didn't have very good cell service in there but she had a she had a hospital phone in her room that had a direct number so I went to custom and I put her number in there into her room so 
when I did that, I can initiate the call on my mobility app, and it would outpulse caller ID to the customer my my DID for agility. But the phone call coming to me would be at the hospital room that I was working in um, with her. So that's one thing I haven't talked about. The purpose of the mobility app is when you call individuals, customers, whoever, vendors, they're getting your DID that is configured on your IP office, right? They're not getting on caller ID. They're not getting your cell phone number. So that's powerful. You have the idea in all of this is you have one business card with one phone number on it. You're not having to put your cell phone number on there. You're not having to give an office number or secretary. You have one number that is that they're able to reach you at. And that number follows you wherever you are. So even in I'm in the hospital room with family, I can set custom, set the hospital number there into that room and when I initiate the call on the mobility device it calls me back in the hospital room and then it connects the call to the customer and I can work from there. Okay. Now we talked about twinning. This is where you can enable twinning. Okay. If you're in the office, receive calls on work only. That means when I get a call from a customer, I only want my desk phone to ring. I don't want twinning to go to my mobile device. Now, let's say I'm working. Um, I've left the office. I left in a hurry. I forgot to set twinning on myself on my desk phone using a button. Now I'm already out in the field, and I realize I need to set it. I can just come to this screen, and I can enable twinning right there. Okay. Now those calls are being twinned. Same thing, I can turn it on and off there. And again, you can twin calls to you know any number. Um, you can select custom, home, whatever. All right, let's go up here, and I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi. I can see here. Let's go ahead and make a, a VoIP call, and I'll show you. I demonstrated to you guys already what the other type call looks like. Let's do a VoIP call. Okay. You can see here the icon has changed. That particular icon in this scenario is going to uh, be a VoIP. And this is going over my home Wi-Fi, so it's it's not using minutes. And a lot of these here, these icons you see here, are the same icons that you're going to see on your iPhone. It just kind of put the, uh, and I got voicemail, but I'll end that call. Well, I'll hold it a second. Um, I can put it on speaker, okay? <clears throat> I can see the call here. I can transfer the call if I need to to another individual. That, But that will let you go back and forth between the screens gives me a call timer. This next icon here will disconnect the call. That particular call was very clear. So, um, and it's my home network, so I have QoS set up and all that. And like I said, the VoIP is is you are strictly at the whim of the network that you're on. Let's see, I have a question. Um, external ringer, where did you see that? Let's see, somebody saw external ringer somewhere. Let's try to make a call. We'll do that again. I don't see, I'm not sure exactly where you see external ringer, Charlie, but um, we can jump into that um, maybe off this call. If you have a screenshot or something, you can send me if you see it on yours or um, I'll touch base with you after this. But that's the VoIP, the VoIP piece of it. Um, 
So we kind of went over, I think we just about touched on everything. If you need to go to a dial pad and you just want to make a phone call, oops, you can hit the, uh, uh, the squares here, make a phone call. All right. So that, in a nutshell, is the mobili mobility application for the iPhone. Uh, the Android looks a little different, but it's very similar. So you shouldn't have too many issues with that. Let me go through my list. Showed you which one to install. I want to talk about that one more time because this is a issue where a lot of people get stuck on. When you download it from the App Store, you need to make sure it's the Avaya 1X Mobile Preferred 4, and then it always cuts it off right there, and it should say for um, uh, IP Office. And you'll know you have the right one when it says Mobile IPO underneath the icon there okay all right and we'll do a real quick technical dive let's say you're troubleshooting and I'll, I'll jump into a wire shark session um, yeah I'll send you a PowerPoint so here we have um, when deploying the mobility app we're always fighting ports right they're always we're always hearing all the ports are open and then um, well in actuality they're not and we can tell if they're not or not um, if I'm deploying this to a customer and they're telling me everything's open first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install Wireshark on that 1x portal server server all right and I'm going to have my iPhone with the mobility app configured for that customer and I'm going to know my IP address, right? So everybody knows how to do that. If I need to find out what my IP address is um, at here at my house, I go to Google and I ask it. Right, it gives me an IP address, 99.136.88.180. Okay, so that is the IP address that the mobility app is going to be coming from. Okay, so this I would do a search we are set a filter inside of Wireshark and I'm going to search for that address right it'd be 99.136.88.180 in this scenario the um, the iPhone is sitting at 11.253 okay let me get this in there we go. It's sitting at 11.253. So when I see communication coming in, so by the way, this is a snippet of uh, Wireshark Trace where it's working. I can see the connection come in, okay, and it tries to connect to using a TCP connection to my 1x portal server at 11.9. And then I get these send requests, and I get a window size, all right? The window size will change, but the important thing is is that it's not just zero. Okay, so the window size is how much information it's 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 allowed to receive back. So the one X portal responds back and it it says, Okay, yeah, let's talk. And it's also giving a window size. And they go back and forth and they they receive sins and acts and it goes back and it trans uh, transfers data back and forth. Okay? If it wasn't working, you would not see nearly as much entries in here. What you would see is you would get a request from <sighs> you would get a request from somebody recognizes their trace. You would get a request you would see the request coming in right from my IP and then you would see this immediate response, okay? And that would be the denial. In this particular case, what it was is the ports were open on the firewall, um, but the ports, but there was a firewall on the One X Portal service. Uh, or I'm sorry, on the One X Portal server. All right, so it, you would see it hit the server, but then you would see it respond back with the window size of zero, and it would go boom, 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 boom. You'd see that it come in, and that would be the response. It'd come in, and that would be the response. But even if you're having, um, let's say, the port is blocked at the firewall, you can still install the One X Portal, uh, uh, Wireshark Shark on One X Portal, and um, what you would see is you wouldn't see anything coming across on that port. And if you're familiar enough with Wireshark and it's cut off on this picture, you actually get little plus signs 
next to each entry and if you hit plus you'll see the source will have it'll show you the port that it's trying to communicate on and if you remember that beginning slide which we'll go back to we'll go back to it now Let's see go back 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 it communicates on port 8444 so if you're getting if that's being blocked here and I have Wireshark running here I'm not gonna see any of those entries right but if it's coming through here and I'm seeing those um, entries where it's denying it then it's probably blocked at the firewall on the server not on the firewall here anyway that's just kind of a quick uh, jump into on the technical side uh, a lot of these we get um, response back which by the way we really appreciate the responses you give us guys because it helps us provide more value on these calls with you um, uh, one response was you wanted a little more technical so I try to throw some in there at the end um, but that's really all I have let me look at my questions um, if you want this PowerPoint I can send it to you just shoot me your email address uh, mine is pfragway at agilitycg.com. Um, you can get that off our contacts. Uh, on our website, we have everybody in the company, and you can should be able to get that information from there. Also, our uh, website is agilitycg.com. If you go to agilitycg.com forward slash events, you'll find um, future presentations such as this and also uh, different get-togethers that we have, I believe, are posted up there. Um, at the end of this, you'll be sent a survey. Uh, fill that survey out, and um, like I said, it helps us provide you guys with uh, more value so you're not wasting your time um, when you join up and uh, spend an hour with us or so. Also, uh, support contracts. Uh, every day we deal with people that don't have support contracts, and it's it, and it's really bad situation for them, especially if they're having a major issue. Um, get your contracts, and they pay off. Um, because uh, a lot of them, we have two different types. We have advisor, which is um, uh, we can consult you through just about any issue you're having. And also extended team, maybe you don't want the consultation, you just want us to take it and run with it, you don't want to deal with it. Extended team um, is the step up. Also with the contracts, you get free upgrades. So um, why, there was quite a few features in this. Uh, release 9 like the VoIP mode that you get um, uh, and if you have a support contract you would get that upgrade for free so that pays off pretty quick in that scenario anyway um, I don't see any more questions I really appreciate everyone joining today and we'll have some more in the future thank you guys